Hi, I'm David McCarter, and you are watching Russ Cam. I'm David McCarter. I'm from San Diego. I drove all the way out here to attend Code Camp. I really like the Phoenix Code Camp. It's uh, you know, it's different, a little bit different than the ones we have in Southern California. SoCal Code Camp, that, that is a, that's a nice one over there. Yeah, SoCal Code Camps are yeah. really fun. We do three a year. Last month I was at Silicon Valley, and that's the largest code camp in America. You know, the Saturday that we were there this year, we had, uh, they had like 22, 2,500 people. Yeah, that was incredible. I was there too, man. Yeah. That was just mind-blowing, just yeah. mind-blowing. All those people and such a melting pot of technology there. Very melting pot. And I really hand it to the guys who run that because, you know, they yeah. get 200 volunteers just to run it. Yeah. So you have done or are doing three sessions, I believe, at this conference. I am doing three. Uh, and uh, why don't you tell us, talk about those. With, uh, well, the first one I just got done is called Geeks Anonymous. As I usually tell people, it's my uh, AA for Geeks, <laughs> where uh, it's purely just a discussion where we talk about you know what geeks like. Hi, I'm Russ, and I'm a geek. <laughs> <laughs> what we like, what we don't like, and how can we make things better. I think just keeping up with technology is a big challenge itself. I it mean, is, and that's it, one thing I, I said today. I had a professor once call it techno stress, uh -huh. and I always remember that because I definitely have a 110% case of that. You know, because every time, especially when a new version of .NET comes out, I get very stressed and going, oh my gosh, now I have to learn the Windows RT, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that's what makes, to me, that's what makes programming interesting. Yeah. Is there's, you can never learn everything. Yeah. It's impossible. You're right. Every day is a learning experience, and that's why I look, one of the reasons I love being a software engineer. And I think you can kind of gauge uh, the excitement level a lot of times and technologies as a good barometer of, mm -hmm. you know, whether that is really something you should, should dive into. Right. You know, I go to a lot of code conferences like you do, and for example, now I'm seeing a lot of the HTML5 and JavaScript rooms are packed mm -hmm. and that's because it's solving a problem today here and now you know responsive web design and responsive websites you got to have these things be able to uh, you know adapt all over the place that's why our widgmo product is like selling off the roof mm -hmm. i mean we're getting a ton of downloads on, on widgmo uh, which by the way you said you you knew some of the component one folks early on and have used the component one in the past want to talk about used, that at all i have used component one i've been using component one since they were video soft component one and video soft have always been one of the you know companies that I've always recommended to people because yeah. I know not only because I know the owners and yeah. who started the company but you know I basically don't <laughs> recommend companies I've had major issues with. So let's get back to your other two sessions because those are I think equally compelling. <laughs> uh, why don't you talk about those that you're doing here? So the next one is my how to survive the technical interview. Outside of a Microsoft conference this is the biggest audience attended talk I've ever done. Huh. Um, up in Silicon Valley, I get 300 plus people. Amazing. I usually, the first time I did it in Silicon Valley, it was literally people were packed in the hallways and sitting on the floor to huh. see it. It helps, especially the engineers who don't interview all the time, which hopefully you're huh. not, you know, uh, brush up on what they need to do to interview. You know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a science. You just can't go in there uh, not prepared. And that's what I really focus on in the talk is being prepared for prepared. the interview. That's it. Recently, in the last couple of weeks, I had a coworker um, tell me, an ex coworker, tell me that uh, he went for a technical interview and he totally blew it. And I emailed him back and I said, Well, did you watch my video on YouTube? Mm -hmm. And he goes, No. And I go, Well, do that. <laughs> Number step one. <laughs> and, and a week yeah. later, I got an email from him saying, "Dave, I did what you what you say in your talk, and I totally aced it." He's See? getting a he's getting a uh, offer just oh, because he did the steps in my talk. The last talk I'm going to be doing is the talk I've been doing every code camp for seven years, and that's my um, uh, .NET uh, coding standards talk, which is based off my latest book called Dave McCarter's .NET Coding Standards. One of the first questions I ask when I do the talk is is how many people here practice coding standards. And every talk I go to, there's only two or three people that raise their Isn't hand. Isn't that something? And, wow. and then after that, this year I've said, can you guys please start doing coding standards so I don't have to do this talk anymore? <laughs> I'm very yeah. passionate about coding standards. Just for, not only from their maintainability, yeah. um, but you know. Uh, it pays right, off. I it mean, pays off in the end. And, yeah. and unfortunately, a lot of people don't see that. Yeah. And believe me, if you ever, one of the questions I always ask is, is how many people have taken over somebody's code. Yeah. Uh, Almost everybody raises their hand. Yeah. And then I ask how many people enjoyed that experience. Right. Nobody raises their hand. 
Yeah. And that's why you need coding standards. It, I have the new book coming out uh, nice. from Rocks on .NET 4.5. Congratulations. That's along a, with Billy Hollis and Bill Sheldon oh, and a lot of other great. top authors have yeah. that book coming out next month. I think it's going to be a great book because it actually came out after the release. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually uh, you know, uh, wrote it on the release code. One yeah. of the other things I'm, I'm really proud of is uh, you know, I uh, run the San Diego .NET Developers Group and I'm the only founder member left. I'm the president of the group. Yeah. We actually, in April, we turned 19 years old. I'm actually writing my first non-geek book, which is called, uh, it's about tribute bands. So, you know, the Van Halen tribute bands. How and cool the is that? Zeppelin tribute bands. And so I've interviewed, you know, over 30 bands for the book. I know I like you for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thanks for your time being on RustCam. I really, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Stay tuned for photos after this short message. Take your HTML5 applications to the next level with Widgmo. Widgmo is a complete kit of over 40 UI widgets. Enjoy rich interactive charts, data grids, menus, and more. Widgmo, it's everything you need to build a better web. Go to widgmo.com and download your free trial of Widgmo. Go to component1.com slash RustCam to find other episodes and check out my blog. Don't miss an issue of the RustCam TV daily news with feeds from over 400 industry influentials. Subscribe today at RustCam.component1.com. Plus, follow RustCam TV on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah.